Hello everyone. Welcome to RoboPrayer. In this video, I'm going to explain you how you can do interfacing of four cross four keypad matrix using STM32 microcontroller. In the last two videos, I showed you how to do bare metal programming for STM32 board. In this video, also I'll be using bare metal programming. So let's start the session. So here you can see this is the four cross four keypad matrix. It contains four row and four column. There are four row and four columns are present in this keypad matrix. Now the rows are output lines from the microcontroller and the columns are input lines to the microcontroller. So we have to make all row output and we have to make all columns as an input. So in the program, we'll be making all the rows to output and all columns will be doing input. So now let's get back to the STM32 cube ID. So I have opened STM32 cube ID. Let's create a new project. I'll go to new and then STM32 project. Okay, here we go. Now let's select the board. So I'll just click on board selector. Let's write the board name. So I'm using Nucleo F double four six RE. So I'll choose this one. Let's select here also, and then let's do next. Okay, now let's give a name. So keypad matrix interfacing. Keypad matrix interfacing. So we are going to write bare metal programming. We are going to refer the data sheet and reference manual. So I will be selecting empty. If you want HL abstraction layer programming, then you can select STM32 cube ID. In this video, I am going to show bare metal programming. I will select empty. And then let's do finish. <coughs> okay. So our project is created. Keypad matrix interfacing. This is our project. Now I'll explain how keypad matrix works and what logic we are going to use for interfacing with STM32. So the logic is all columns we are going to make pulled high using internal pull up registers and all rows we are going to declare as an output. Whenever we press switches, let's say I'm pressing S0, that time row 0 and column 0 are going to short. And if S0 is not pressed, then initially this state will be high. But whenever I press the S0, it is going to show low. So let's start the coding things. So I will just go to the main.c file and we are going to print all the buttons on the monitor SWV terminal. So for that, let's use the standard header file has include stdio.h we are going to use SWV viewer so thought that we need itm code because we are going to use printf statement so itm code let me copy from here So this ITM unit code is required whenever you want to use printf statement in STM32. This statement will go inside syscalls. I will just come here and then I will paste all the things here. And then I have to just copy this ITM send care. This thing you have to paste here. That's it. And now come to our program. Let's remove the warning things. Yes. So first let's connect the keypad matrix to STM32 board. So do the connection. 
PA0, PA1, PA2, PA3 is connected with R1, R2, R3 and R4 and PA6, PA7, PA8 and PA9 is connected with C1, C2, C3, C4. Let's note down all the things here. input and all rows we are going to make it output so first let's note down all the base addresses of registers so first we need gpio a port register so let's open the reference manual and let's note down the base address of gpio a peripherals so i will just go in gpio a and then I will just go in GPIO registers. Then we have to find first we have to note down the base addresses of GPIO A peripherals. So for that we will go to the memory and bus architecture. And here in memory organization we can see the base addresses of all the peripherals. So we are going to use GPIO A port. So the base address of GPIO A is this one and as well as we need rcc unit to enable the peripherals so we have to note down this address also so for us for so in this video we are going to use two peripherals rcc and gpioa so we have to note down these two base addresses so let's note down first rcc base address base address of RCC peripheral 0x4002380 and now base address of GPIOA peripheral base address of GPIOA peripheral 0x4002000 here you can see 0x4002 Double zero, double zero. So that's it. We have noted this register. Now let's declare all the things. Let's declare the base address of the registers. UN thirty two T, and then whenever we use the button, whenever we are going to declare a pin as an input, then for that we have to choose the volatile type qualifier because the any time uh, the button state can be varied so whenever the sudden changes uh, would be applicable i will suggest you to use volatile type qualifier because it will tell the compiler that this pin this state uh, is going to change uh, randomly so let's note down RCC base address again we have to do this so we have to do typecasting because we are going to store addresses to the variable so let's open this reference manual let's go to RCC unit so I will just open RCC reset and clock control and we have to enable the GPIO A peripheral so I will just go to ASP1 ENR peripheral clock enable registers so ARCC HB1 peripheral clock enable registers so we have to enable GPIO A peripheral because we are going to use this peripheral uh, for this activity the offset of this ASP1 is 0x30 so this offset we have to add to the base address of RCC so the final address of this one will be 4002 in here because this is a pointer variable so we have okay so we have noted the rcc base address now let's note down gpio address for gpio addresses we have to declare output and input pa0 a1 a2 a3 
R connected to R1, R2, R3 and R4 which we are going to make it output. So now let's open the reference manual and let's go to the registers, GPIO registers. First register is GPIO motor register. So we are going to use the motor register and using this register we are going to set input and output. So for input we have to make it 00. zero. For output mode we have to make 0, 01. So we are going to use this thing for that the base address is already we have noted the base address of GPIOA G0x4002 4 times 0 and the offset of mode register is 0x00. So let's note down this address. So here we can do pointer variable and then GPIO model and the address would be 0x4002000. Now we need output data register and input data register. So we have to find output data register so this is output data register the offset of output data register is 14 so this offset address we have to add to the base address of GPIO A peripherals so let's paste again and let's give a name for this variable so this will be GPIO A ODR output data register and the offset we have to add in the base address of GPIO A. So 4002-0014. This is the address of output data register of GPIO A peripheral. Again we need one more variable input data register. So let's give a name GPIO A idea and let's see the offset value of input data register so input data register the offset of input data register is 10 so this offset we have to add to the base address of gpio a so double zero one zero now we need one more register pull up or pull down as i told columns we have to do pull up and we need pull down also for further use so let's note down the pull down register address address we have noted of gpio a peripherals only we have to note down the offset and this offset we have to add to the base address of gpio a so g 0 x 0 c so let's copy this let's paste and let's give a name GPIO A pull up and value will be 0x 0c that's it so we have noted all the base addresses along with the we have to enable the GPIO A peripherals so for that we have to go to the RCC unit and we have to go to the peripheral clock enable register and we have to set that bit so let's go to the RCC unit and let's find AHP1 peripheral clock enable register. RCC1 peripheral clock enable register. We have to set the zeroth bit, which is GPIO A enable. The offset of this already we have added. So we have to set this bit. So for that, just we need to copy this thing and then we have to paste yeah that's it setting the zeroth bit of ahb1 enr register now we have to 
now we have to make all the columns input so for that let's go to the reference manual let's go to the border border register gpio o border register so we have to set all the columns input so columns are connected to PA6, PA7, PA8 and PA9 so PA6 so it will start from here PA6, PA7, PA8 and PA9 it means 12, 13, 14, 15 and 16, 17 So the value will be for input we have to clear the bit so 0 0 0 0 0 0 and 0 0 okay so let's come to this let's copy the model register and let's paste so we have to clear the bit for clearing we have to do and operation and before that we have to do the negation sign and then so we have to send 0 0 from 12 as we have seen in the reference manual I will show again so we have to make this 12 13 14 15 16 17 and 18 19 bit low because we are going to make input so this is done is showing syntax error yeah now it's correct so we have declared PA6, PA7, PA8 and PA9 as an input. Now let's make PA0, 1, 2, 3 as an output. For that again let's go to the reference manual and for output we have to make 0, 1, 0, 1, PA0, PA1, PA2, PA3. So we have to use modal 0, modal 1, modal 2 and modal 3 starting from 0 till 7. So we have to make 0, 1. So it will be like this 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So we can say 5, 5. So let's copy this variable let's copy the variable and let's paste this and then before setting first we should clear the bit so i will just do so let's do 0xff it will clear all the bit starting from 0 so clearing the bit and now we will set the bit so again I'll do control V for setting we have to do OR operation so OR equal to now we have to send 0x55 from 0 bit output pa0 PA1, PA2, and PA3. So till here done. Now we have to do uh, all columns pull up. So for that let's go to the reference manual and let's go to the pull up register pull up and down register here it is 
and for pull up we have to do 0 1 so we'll be using 6 7 8 9 because column are connected to 6 7 8 9 so we have to use 12 13 14 15 and 16 17 18 19 these 8 bits we have to select and we have to send 0 1 so it will be like 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 5 5 again 5 5 so before setting first we should clear the bit so let's copy this register this variable and then first we will clear those bits which we are going to set so for clearing again we have to use 0 x double f with a negation sign and then we have to send from 12 and now for setting again we will use our operation and then we have to send 0 x double y from starting from 12th bit so that's it we have done all the settings now we have to do the fundamental coding so let's use while loop let me connect the stm32 cube id i have connected that so the first step is let's make all the rows high so for that let's use odr register and let's make all the rows high 0x 0f because we'll be using 4 bit so that's it pa0 pa1 pa2 pa3 so we have to send one to each bit pa0 pa1 pa2 and pa3 all are one one means all are high now we have to make pa0 low for that again we'll paste this and we have to make this pa0 low so for that negation 1 2 0 10 so now pa0 has become low PA0 is low. Now we have to scan all the columns and we have to check on which column the button is pressed. So if the state will be high, then it means button is not pressed. If the state will be low, it means the button is pressed. So for that, we have to scan the column.
So now let's compile the code and let's check whenever I'm pressing the one uh, from the keypad, which is the first row and first column, then it is printing one or not. So for that, first let's verify that. I will just to clean then let's do build so far I have just done the scanning of column 1 uh, here I'm going to check it is printing on the monitor or not if everything goes well same thing we have to do for column 2 column 3 and column let's do debug so in the debug perspective we can see the SWE ITM data console and it is going to print the output on SWP ITM data console if you are not able to find this option here you can go to windows and then inside the show view you can find this option here SWP data console so it is going to print here so first let's configure this I'm going to use port 0 I will just check this one and then ok so it is going to show on this port and then I have to just enable this and I have to run this program and now I'm going to press 1 from my keypad matrix so as you can see it is printing 1 but along with the one it is also printing slash so let's remove this and now let's do debug again rebuild let's do rebuild okay now let's open lw the data console and let's do run i'm going to press one because this infinite loop is there that's why it is printing infinite time now let's do rebuild again relaunch okay so as you can see it is printing one so here i have done the scanning of column one now we have to scan column two three and four the so same thing we have to do let's copy this thing and let's paste again three times and here we have to just change the pin number seven eight, and eight and nine and we have to change the number also if we will press row 1 and column 2 it means if we'll press this 2 button then it is going to print 2 if we will press 3 which means column 3 and row 1 so it will print 3 and if column 4 which means 9 pn9 then it will print a now let's verify these things are actually printing or not so again i am going to relaunch so as of now so far i have added column 1 column 2 column 3 column 4 so whenever it will detect low in row 1 it is going to print the number so I'm going to press pin number I'm going to press number 2 from keypad it is printing 2 now I'm going to press number 3 it is printing which means everything is correct now I'm going to press A from my keypad so I have pressed A and as you can see here we go a is printed on the screen so same thing uh, so far i have just done the row one still we have to finish row two row three and row four the so same thing has to be done for others row also so the logic is same so let's make again all the row high and then we will be making this time our two low the so first step is making the all row high by writing this statement and then row one we have done the scanning and now this time we will be doing for row two 
so let's do the pa1 low this time so this time and this statement i'm going to make pa1 low which means r2 low so r2 low and again we have to scan all the columns for that let's copy this entire statement and let's paste it here and again this time it is going to print 4 from this line 5 this line and then 6 and here it will print B okay so let's verify everything is working till here or not so again we'll do the relaunch let me quickly open the SWV console and let's run the program and this time I'm going to press 4 from keypad so I'm going to press 4 and you can see it is printing 4 and now I'm going to press 5 it is printing 5 I'm going to press 6 and here you can see it is printing 6 and did you observe one thing I'm just pressing once and it is printing 8 to 10 times why so because the button needs debouncing time and we have not put it any delay to avoid that we have to add delay so let's make a function let's make a delay function in teaser delay and inside that it is i for i equal to 0 i less than 40000 and i plus plus that's it. U and 32 D. Yes. Now let's use this delay function. So I'm pressing the buttons and it is printing. But this time also it is printing five times. So again we have to calibrate the delay. So we can increase little bit more. So I have given here 40,000. So I'm going to press 1. It is printing 2, printing 2, 3, printing 3, A, 4, 5, 6, 7, B. So this is the logic. Hope you understand. So the logic is first make all the row high then make any one row low and then after that scan all the columns and read the press button and if the button is pressed it is going to give low and if the button is not pressed it is going to give high hope you like this video for more such a video visit www.roboprayer.com thank you